trade Nick guys. Robertson. Yeah. No, I still I don't I don't understand what he's doing. With well, this, I, but... here's what we understand. We know the Leafs are pissed. I think he's pissed. Yeah. Well, I think it's both sides. And and it's one of those things, the Nick Robertson thing, if we're going to veer off there for just a second. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we talked about it on free agency day. Uh, I think the agent put it out there on free agency day. And and as an agent, that's what you got to do, right? You got to advocate for your client. Of course. Um, uh, because they wanted to see if there could be a move that he was included in, right? Because that of of all days of the year, free agency day, July first, is where all the most moves are done. And we had, you know, CJ said it on the CJ show. They had like a month lead up. Everybody was tampering. So if everybody's tampering, nobody's tampering. <laughs> and uh, you know, I look at it and and I look at Nick Robertson's situation and I question um I question why. Uh, he feels the way that he does, and I'll and I'll say this because uh, I don't. This is a guy that the Leafs stuck with. This yeah. is a guy who had multiple injuries. This is a guy who, when he's been up, he has scored goals. And I, listen, I'm a I'm a Nick Robertson booster, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but Nick Robertson, I have to be realistic as a Nick Robertson booster about what Nick Robertson does when he gets below his own red line or the red line when he gets on the defensive yeah. side of the puck and putting wh- him with Domi. Had its that was crazy fun shifts and it's really not fun shifts. This guy, I think, is a is an absolute lock if he's in the lineup to be on your second power play unit with that shot. It's amazing. Should be. Um, and I hope the Leafs spread the talent around on the on the power play units this upcoming season. I think this guy's going to get twenty goals if he gets regular ice time. I, if you look at his what he had fifteen last year and he only played sixty games or something like that. Yeah, no, he should. Uh, you should get twenty. Honestly, you should get twenty. As, but I, as a 23-year-old? But I look at this and I think, okay, what cards do you believe that you have? And that's why the the agent leaking that out and saying, you know, he doesn't want, he has no interest in signing a contract with Toronto. Why would Toronto trade him? Toronto needs a guy like that. Mm-hmm. They need a depth guy to score 20 goals. This year, to me, seems like Nick's opportunity to step in full time. Yeah. And 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 Brad Living said in the press conference yesterday, I'm still looking for top six help. And it's going to be difficult for him to do that. So I look at this and I go, Nick, why now? Well, a combination of injuries. Um, Defensive gaffes. Well, mostly injuries, though. Like, if, if I'm him, right? The Leafs put me in to the playoffs as an 18 year old, I think, mm-hmm. um, in a very, well. a very unique situation. Yeah. He had their last, um, f- uh, friggin' five on five goal in game three of a five game series, mm-hmm. run it back. Um, <laughs> but he, uh, you know, it looked like the sky was the limit and, Oh, I wonder if this guy's going to be a full-time guy. And because of unique circumstances, again, with COVID he's playing in the AHL years before he should be, then he gets injured again, and he's been lapped by two guys on the depth chart, mm-hmm. at, at least two guys. Um, Matthew Nyes was taken after him, the year after him. Yep. He's, he's been lapped. Um, Bobby McMahon shows up out of nowhere, does well. Guess what? Lapped. All right. Um, both those guys, if Robertson signs, are ahead of him in the depth chart. And in all of this as well is in in his unhappiness is the fact that because of the way the cap is structured and what they do with this team, he's been the guy that they're sending up and down yep. to make the the cap work for the entire team. And that's been frustrating for him behind the scenes. You know, you don't want to be the the cap shenanigans that the Leafs have to do calling up and down. He played uh, like 11 games the Marlies last and year. I'm pretty sure he didn't sign any bonuses. No. Just like, you know, who else did that? In and out of the lineup, up and down, didn't sign any bonuses, high draft pick. You know what? I feel disrespected. You know what? Trade me, Rasmus Sandin. Right? I don't I don't think any Leafs fans really miss Sandin at this point. Well, he's a good player. He's a good player for making sure. four and a half with Washington. Yeah. He's Listen, part of a and they're able good. to recoup a first round pick for that. Yeah. Yes, no, no. Trade. Which they turned they, to Cowan. Yeah, yeah they got That's out of no it. They got, yeah. it okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. they got out of it okay. Yeah. They got out of it okay, but Guys, like, uh, this is my life. Um, so, like, I can't help but pick up on trends. Like, this is what I do. This is just going to keep happening. Well, it's I, just going to keep happening. Who's I, the next one? I don't think so. Who's the next I, one? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think, yeah, you I, sure? Yeah, I am you sure. You want to put money on it? I doubt it. I think that what's happening here is that, you know, when it gets, gets to Nick Robertson, he's frustrated. I get that. He's probably communicated that frustrating frustration to the team. The team's probably like, Cool, man. Uh, you're not a priority. 
Mm -hmm. And then Bradshaw he, Living said as much in the press conference you referenced. Yeah, you know, it's he's like Nick's Nick's an important part here. You know, he's an important piece, and he's going to be in training camp. So, and and that's, that's the thing is he's going to be in training camp because what's Nick going to do? Sit out a year? You're going to well, go play in Zurich? Like you can. So last can. night, last night I was like, you know what? I'm going to look at trade possibilities for Nick Robertson, um, and I'm going to make him as happy as possible. I'm going to trade him to California. I'm I'm mm -hmm. going to trade him where he's from. And two of those teams have a, an abundance of opportunity, right? They must. Because mm -hmm. Anaheim, you would think, is special. One is the Ducks and the other is the um, friggin' Sharks. If you go and look at their depth charts, no, not really. Not really. And, I, and yeah. like, you also got to be able to offer the Leafs something in a trade that would make it worthwhile. The best I could do is, like, Fabian Zetterlund's. But like, I don't know why I, the Sharks would do that. I, I wonder if if the Leafs were going to move on from a guy like Nick. He's he's not under contract, so you don't save anything on the cap. But like, do you? It, does he give you a pick that you can then spend on trade deadline next year, or you know, is it basically can you recoup the second rounder that you? Right. Well, and I don't think anybody's moving a second round. Do you want to go to the other California team and you take RFA problem for RFA problem and trade him for Arthur Kaliev? To the Kings, Ooh. who requested a trade, I think like earlier in February ish. Tell me a little bit. They about never moved him. Archer Kaliev, uh, underperforming big winger. Ooh, for, oh, Brad for the, likes that. For the Kings who can't find a place Ooh. in the lineup. Okay, so he wants to move on, and maybe you trade problem for problem. Okay, possible. How how did he do last year? I believe it was fifteen points in fifty one games. Yeah, mm, Robertson had that many goals. Mm -hmm. Eh. Eh. If I'm taking Kaliev, um, it's not enough, frankly. I look I look at Kaliev though as somebody who had higher expectations. He was somebody who performed really well in the OHL. It was 44 goals in 57 games. Robertson for, did better. In the OHL. For, for sure. Mm -hmm. But you can't you can't just get Nick Robertson back. You'd have to keep Nick Robertson for that. Yeah. So you we're we're asking to probably lose the trade in the short term to maybe win it in the long run. I think mm. I think you know, I, I think about me being twenty two and I was Oh God. Very Oh God. I was very ah! ambitious and very wanting to move up the ladder and I got remember I got my first morning show when I was twenty three in Calgary. Okay. And as a thirty six year old man, is that not psychotic? What? giving 23 year old you a morning show uh, i was a little i was i was mature work wise i wasn't mature relationship wise right but I was oh mature okay work -wise. I, it's different i started in radio when i was 18 right so i had five years of experience at that point so right. um but but i think so it would have been dumb for me i remember the general manager's name guy named Stu myers he sat me down when i got to calgary and this is four or five months in because i was getting antsy i was like you know this is we're not high enough in the ratings because i'm very competitive mm -hmm. behind the scenes and and um and he sat me down and he's like, listen, your career has gone like this. Mm -hmm. He's like, there are going to be points in your career where it kind of goes like this. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 you're, you've you been on a rocket ship. It's okay for it to not be a rocket ship forever. Uh, you're, there's going to be times where you're building for the next stage. I had a lot of that right around the same age. And I look yeah. at Nick Robertson and I feel like I get that part of it. And I feel like it's the Leafs job to be the mature ones, to be the adults in the room. Mm -hmm. They have old, older management, right? All the guys are in their 50s and 60s. They understand what it's like to be in your early 20s. To sit them down and say, listen, Nick, we get where you're at. Mm -hmm. We get that this hasn't been a perfect scenario for you. We get the injuries have been a biter. Uh, that We know that COVID's played a role in this. Mm -hmm. Change of general manager, change of coach, change of line mates. Last season was a bit, a bit of a mess, especially in the first three months while they were trying to figure out the lines. Uh, Keith clearly wasn't a big, big fan. Here are the three things we need you to do. And I'm assuming the three things would be uh, continue to score goals, mm -hmm. uh, make simple plays in the defensive zone. Don't try to deke your way out of problems. Better skating. And work on the skating. And if you could do those three things, you're a lock to be second or third line this year and you'll get some power play time. And, and that's... I think that's what lease management needs to do. I understand the emotion on his side. I think lease management needs to be, okay, we're we're the adults in the room. Calm this young adult down mm -hmm. and show him, listen, you do have a real chance here. We have a salary cap situation that allows you to have a real chance here. And, you know, here's the contract. It's a one year. It's a prove it. Prove it. Show us you can hit 20 goals like we think you can. One year is exactly what I was thinking, yeah. 
And that's what I would say. And then and then say at the end of that, we'll revisit this. And if you're still not happy, we can talk about it then. See, even a one year, like again, the Leafs have all the leverage here. The all the all Nick Robertson can do is withhold his services. That's all he can do. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't want to go to Europe because he'll be out of sight, out of mind in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's really on the table. I think some people would suggest that, but it's it's <laughs> I just want to I no, wanted to throw that out there. The ideal Europe scenario is, not a good option. is Nick Robertson plays for the Toronto Maple Leafs next season. Yeah. Like I don't I think, think so. there's not a lot of trades out there you're winning. Uh it just initially in the one for one trade or whatever it would be. So yeah, you want him to just change the attitude going into the season and be willing to earn a job here. And yeah. then if it doesn't go well, if you play your way into the lineup, then you're happy here. Or if you play well, then they can move you for a piece. He waited too long to put that trade request out. He did. Um, because someone, uh, I don't remember who it was, they tweeted me like as soon as it happened. They're like, what about Chicago? Like there's lots of opportunity there. And the second he said it, I went, whoa, Chicago, that's a really good fit. And they signed a few guys. I'm like, it's not a good fit anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's July 3rd now. Um, if you're not sitting in a seat, you're screwed. Well, except, Nick, today's your lucky day. You're not screwed. There's a seat in blue and white, number yeah. 89, right here in Toronto. The current one you're sitting on. Yeah, man. Like, listen, you want to get out of here at some point, fine. Um, Now's not the time. Yeah. Uh, now, let's get to the last guy that they signed. Uh, oh, before we get too far, well, we're already very far from it. Steve, we have to play a game with um, Mr. Mermis. Oh, because that's uh, the guy I wanted to talk about. Oh, you, you do? Okay. Yeah, the third guy. Uh, uh, let me just pull up the we game I was going to play. Oh, Pere was the guy. Yeah, Pere. I don't know anything. Interchangeable. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Good for him. First NHL contract at age 25. Good for him. 